Hi there, it's Tabletop Templar, back for another video. This time another spotlight video uh, where I take a look at a game from my collection and talk for a little bit about it. So today we've got uh, the rise and decline of the Third Reich. Uh, this is another Avalon Hill game. Originally in 1974 it came out, uh, and they also came out with a second edition, which is the version I have, in 1976. So it's again, it's a, it's a game from the 70s. This time it's about World War II, in particular World War II in Europe uh, and also North Africa. But um, it's a very uh, classic game, uh, well known, uh, maybe even slightly eclipsed by the other version, uh, Advance Third Reich which also paired with a uh, Pacific version, uh, The Empire of the Rising Sun. Now, I don't have those games. I just have this one. Now, why do I have this one instead of Advanced Third Reich? Well, because I like this one a little bit better. And I, I find that this one is a little bit um, easier to play, while it isn't a the most detailed game in which Advanced Third Reich I think provided that level of detail and uh, complexity that fans of uh, the original Third Reich maybe wanted. Um, I like this because it's it's a little more basic, a little more simple, um, and I feel like this one it mirrors history a little bit better. Uh, just like the Avalon Hills 1776 um, it's a pretty good simulation of the war in Europe and for World War II, so I enjoy it. So we're going to take, take a look into this. I love the box art. I think Avalon Hill always have done a great job. So here's the counters. They use the NATO uh, designations and sim symbols. And your pretty standard uh, first is the combat factor, and second is the movement. Same as uh, 1776. If you want to check out that video, look at that. That's the first one in the series. Uh, Germany is in black. Um, and then this is uh, Britain. Blue for the French. Uh, these are the Russians. Here's another issue. The colors are sometimes very similar. These are the Russians. These are the Americans on the left. Can you tell the difference? Uh, it can be tricky, especially when they get worn out. This is a second, another second-hand copy. Uh, it it's, can be tricky. Thankfully, they're not next to each other. They never really fight next to each other, thankfully. Uh, but it can be very tricky when you have all these colors that are just a little bit similar. And you have here your um, production sheets, campaign for the campaign, your force pool, what you can build. Pretty detailed. This is for the 39, 1939 campaign, or 39 scenario any campaign, sorry. And then your 1942 and 1944 uh, scenario, depending on what you're playing. So you have Soviet Union, Britain, France, uh, Germany, and Italy. Uh, and then there's minor nations, there's and neutrals like uh, Spain and Turkey, which can come into the game. Um, and so it kind of provides some, even though it's a some the, some of the complaints are that it, it follows history too much. I think that it provides a perfect amount of history as a simulation of World War II in Europe, but also a little bit of potential what-ifs. You know, what if Turkey entered the game? What if Spain entered the game? You know, and there, there's quite a few what-ifs you, you can do that I really enjoy. This rule book has seen better days. This is a bit beat up, but it still works. Still works pretty good. Um, I do, the, here's the the interesting one, this is the, your, on the left here, your variation chart where different things can happen and you can each choose a counter, one through ten, and uh, and then, you know, maybe Romania and Bulgaria become active and, you know, the fall of 1940 and there's just different things that can happen. I really like the, it, it mixes things up, there's scenarios, there's, you know, plenty of alter, um additional rules you want to play, make it a little bit more uh, advanced. 
um, definitely less so than the advanced Third Reich. So I'll show the board a little bit here. Uh, it's typical Avalon Hill style. There's Turkey. Um, but it's all, you know, very well colored. You can see everything. Um, there's nothing that's, you know, hard to see, hard to read. You know, it, it might not be as pretty as modern standards, but honestly, I like these Avalon Hill boards. I think they they do a good job of just being functional. You can see everything very clearly. They're, they're you know, this, these bookcase games are very compact. You can fit them, you can fit quite a few of these. Um, this doesn't, yeah, I'm just, I'm just showing these real quick. Uh, it definitely, it, it's in four parts. Just like all Avalon, these kind of bookcase games, they put these maps in four parts. This, these are very long and thin, very similar of the Guns of August. Uh, another game I'll be showcasing at some point. So just wanted to show you these real quick. Here's the, so the United States is on, off the board, and here's the western part of Britain, a little bit of Ireland, Spain, western France, here's some North Africa, Morocco, Algeria, nutrition charts. I, I just think the, the game works, it's functional. I like these games, you know, there's some basic navies. They're really just surface ships. There's some U-boats, um, but that's basically it. You know, there's some bombers, and then there's fighters, or interceptors, and then there's, there's air wings, like this here. And then there's infantry. And then there's some, uh, this is, uh, these are tanks, with the square and the circle inside, or oval inside. Yeah, I mean, for its time, this is really good. This is a really good game, and uh, I think it works pretty well. It's more complicated, I would say a little more complexity than, um, let's say, War and Peace. A little bit more than War and Peace, and definitely more than uh, 1776. But I think it, uh, it holds up pretty well. You know, it's a game that's not super long. You know, if you want to play a World War II game that has a little more complexity than, say, Axis and Allies, it's not just a bunch of dice chucking. There's a little bit more strategy. Axis and Allies is a good introductory game for someone, you know, maybe a teenager that has never played these kind of any kind of war game at all. But once you move beyond the Axis and Allies, the Risk type games where there's sort of figures and just dice chucking. And you want to get into a little bit more strategy. These are the kind of games that you you know you kind of look to next. There are definitely some very complicated games that are in World War II, but this is I think is the perfect middle ground. You know you want a game that's more complex than Axis and Allies, you know, and Risk. But you want something that's not gonna you're not gonna have to you know leave set up and play for months on end, you know days is days weeks on end. This is a game that you can sit down and you can play it in the evening. You can play World War II in Europe in an evening, and to me I think that's great. That's what board games really should be about. They're not necessarily have to be super complex where you spend hours and hours and hours playing a game. You just want to sit down, pull out this you know bookcase game. You just stick on the bookcase, and then you just pull out and play. Hey, we want to play Napoleonics. We want to play, you know, the American Revolution. We want to play the Civil War. Okay, let's pull off this game and just sit down and play it in an evening. You know, they're not... I, I think I just love these, these series of games that Avalon Hill made. They all hold up pretty well today, and they're just games that you can sit down and play with your friend, or even solo. They all solo really well. And you can just play it in a reasonable amount of time, and on a pretty complex uh, situation, a scenario. You know, World War II. So, I just love these kind of games. I just want to show this, and uh, I would definitely recommend... Uh, the Rise and Decline of the Third Reich, Avalon Hill. Uh, I definitely recommend, you know, if you want a game like this, and uh, also, or for yourself, or for, you know, 
your group, I would definitely recommend it. So, anyway, thanks for watching. If you like it, leave a like. And uh, if you want to watch more videos like this, hit the subscribe button. And I'll catch you again next time.